Chapter 20 How King Etzel sent to Burgundy for Krimhild That was in time when Lady Helka died, and King Etzel sought another wife. That his friend advised his marriage to proud widow in Burgundian land, Height Lady Krimhild. Since fair Helka was dead, they spoke, would ye gain a noble wife, the highest and the best king ever won, then take the same lady, the stalwart Siegfried was her husband. Then spake the mighty king, How might that chance, sith I am heathen, and be Christian not a whit, whereas this lady is a Christian, and therefore would not plight her troth? It would be a marvel, and that ever hap. The doughty warriors answered, What if she do it perchance, for the sake of your high name and your mickle goods? One should at least make a trial for the noble dame. Well, may ye love the stately fair. The noble king then spake, which of you be acquaint with the people in the land by the Rhine? Up spake then the good knight Rudger of Becklen. I have known from child the three noble and lordly kings, Gunther and Gernot, the noble knights and good, the third height Grishil. Each of them doth use the highest honours and curtsy as their forebearers. Two have always done. Then answered Etzel, Friend, I prithee, tell me whether she should wear the crown at my this my land, and she be so fair as hath been told me. It shall never rue my dearest kin. She compareth well in beauty with my lady Helka, the royal queen. Certes, that I be in all this world the king's bride more fair. He may well be of good cheer to whom she plight her troth. He spake, So bring it to pass, Rudiger, as I be dear to thee, and if ever I do lie at Krimhild's side, I will requite for thee, for it is best I may. Then hast thou done my will in fullest wise. From my treasure chambers I will bid thee be given such store of horses, of clothes, and all thy wilt, that thou and thy fellowship may live full merry. I bid full plenty of these things be made ready against thine errand. To this the lordly Bargrave Rudiger replied, Craved I thy goods, that they were not worthy of praise. With mine own goods which I have from thy hands, will I gladly be thy envoy to the Rhine. Then spake the mighty king, now, when wilt thou ride for the fair, my God keep thee and my lady in all worship on thy journey. May fortune help me, and she look with favour on my suit. Rudiger made answer, Ere we void the land, we must first make ready arms and trappings, that we may stand with honour before princes. I will lead to the Rhine five hundred stately men, that wherever in Burgundy I and mine be seen, all may say of thee, Never did any king send afar so many men in better wise than thou hast done to the Rhine. If thou, O mighty king, will not turn back on this account, I'll tell thee that her noble love was subject unto Siegfried, Sigmund's son. Him thou hast seen here, men could in right truth ascribe to him great worship. Then spake King Etzel, Thou, she was the warrior's wife. Yet she was noble prince so peerless that I should not disdain the queen. She liketh me well for her passing beauty. The Margrave answered, That I will tell thee that we shall start hence in four and twenty days. I'll send word to Gutland, my dear lady, that I myself will be the messenger to Krimhild. Rudiger sent word to Becklern, at which the Margravein grew both sorrowful and proud. He told her he should woo for the king a wife. Lovingly she thought on Helka the fair. When the Margravein heard the message, a deal she rued it. Weeping beseemed her at the thought, whether she should gain a lady as a four. Then she thought in Hecla, it grieved her heart full sore. Rudiger should ride in seven days from Hungary. Lusty and merry King Etzel was at this. There in the town of Vienna men prepared their weeds. Then might he no longer delay his journey. At Beckler and Gotland awaited him. The young Magrine, too, Rudiger's child, gladly saw her father and his men. Many fair maids awaited them with joy. Ere the noble Rudiger, rode from the city of Vienna to Beckleren. All their clothes he placed upon their sumpters. They journeyed in such wise that not a whit was taken from them. When they came to town of Beckleren, the host full lovingly bade lodge his fellowship and ease them well. The noble Gotland saw the host come gladly, as likewise his dear daughter did. The young Margravine, to her his coming could not be liefer. How fain she was to see the heroes from the Hunnish land, with smiling mien the noble maiden spake, Now be my father and his men full welcome here. Then great thanks were given to the young Magravine by many a doughty knight in courteous wise. Well wot Gotland Sir Rodiger's mood. 
when at night she lay close by his side, what kindly question the Megrine put, whether the king of the Huns had sent him. He spake, My lady Gotland, I'll gladly make this known to thee. I must woo another lady for my lord, sith that the fair Helka hath died. I will ride for Krimhild to the Rhine. She shall become a mighty queen here among the Huns. Would to God, spoke Gotland, and that might hap, sith we do hear such speech of her many honours, that she might perchance replace our lady for so in our old age, and that we might be fain to let her wear the crown in Hungary. Then spake the Margrave, My love, ye must offer to those who are to ride with me to the Rhine, your goods and loving wise. When heroes travel richly, then they are of, of lofty mood. She spake, There be none that taketh gladly from my hand, to whom I would not give that will beseemeth him, or ever ye and your men part hence. Quoth the Margrave, Thy doth like me well. Ho, oh, what rich cloths of silk were borne from their treasure chambers! What an hour of this the clothing of the noble warriors was busily lined from the neck down to their spurs! Rudiger had chosen only men that pleased him well. On the seventh morning the host and his warriors rode forth from Becklerin. Weapons and clothes aplenty they took with them through the Bavarian land. Seldom did men assail them on the highways for robbery's sake, and within twelve days they reached the Rhine. Then might the tidings not be hid. Men told it to the king and to his liegemen, that stranger guests were come. The host gained say if any knew them. He should tell him so. One saw their sumpters bear right heavy loads, to a scene that they were passing rich. And on in the broad town men pervade them quarters. When that the many strangers had been lodged, these same lords were gazed upon full oft. The people wondered from whence these warriors were come to the Rhine. The hosts now sent for Hagen, if perchance they might be known to him. Then spake the knight of Tronig, None of them have I ever seen, but when we now gaze upon them, I can tell you from whence they ride hither to this land. They must indeed be strangers, and I know them not full soon. Lodgings were now taken for the guests. The envoy and his fellowship were come in passing costly vesture. To the court they rode, wearing goodly garments, cut in full cunning-wise. Then spake the doughty Hagen, as well as I can tell, for I have not seen the lord long time. They ride as it twere, Rudiger from the Hunnish land, a lordly knight and a brave. How can I believe, spake at once the king, that the lord of Becklerin be come to this land? When King Gunther had ended his speech, Hagen, the brave, espied the good knight Rudiger. He and his friends all ran to meet them. Then five hundred knights were seen dismounting from their steeds. Fair were the men from Hungary greeted. Messengers had never worn such lordly clothes. Then Hagen of Tronic spoke full loudly. Now be these knights, the lord of Becklerin and all his men, come in God's name. With worship the speedy knights were greeted. The next of kin to the king went to where they stood. What would have met spoke to Rudiger. Never have we seen guests so gladly here at any time. This I can truly say. On all sides they thank the warriors for their greeting. With all their fellowship they hide them to the hall where they found the king, and with him many valiant man. The lord rides from their seats, though with great chivalry this was done. Now right courteously he met the messengers. Gunther and Gernot greeted the stranger and his vassals warmly, as was his due. He took the good knight Rudiger by the hand and led him to the seat where he sat himself. Men bade pour out for the guests, full gladly this was done, passing good mead and the best of wine that one might find and land among the Rhine. Gristler and Gear both were come, Drankwart and Fulker too, had heard about these strangers. Merry they were of mood, and greeted before the king the noble knights and good. Then spoke Hagen of Tronig to his lord, These they knights should ever require that the Margrave of our sake hath done, for this should the husband of fair Gotland receive reward. King Gunther spake, I cannot hold my peace, ye must tell me how fair Etzel and Helka of the Hunnish land. This was the Margrave now made answer, I'll gladly let you know. He rose from his seat, and with all his men, and spoke a king. And may that it be you permit me, O prince, so will I not conceal the tidings that I bring, but will tell them willingly. Quoth the king, The tidings that have been sent us through you. These I'll let you tell without the reed of friends. Pray let me and my vassals hear them, for I begrudge you no honor that here ye may give. Then spake the lord envoy, My great cust my great master doth commend you upon the Rhine, his faithful service, and to all the kinsmen ye may have. This message is sent in all good faith. 
the noble king bade complain to you his need. His folk is joyless, my lady, the royal Hecca, my master's wife, is dead. Though her hath many a high-born maid been orphaned, daughters of noble princes, whom she hath trained, therefore it standeth full piteously in his land, they'd have alas none that might befriend them faithfully. The king's grief, I win, will albeit, but slowly. Now God reward him, spake Gunther, that he so willingly commendeth his service to mean to my kin. Full gladly have I here heard his greeting, and this both my kindred and my men shall fain requite. Then spake the warrior, Gernot of Burgundy, The world must ever rue fair Helka's death, for her many courtesies which she well known to use. With his speech, Hagen, the passing stately knight, agreed. Then answered Rudiger, the noble and lordly envoy, Sith ye permit me, O king, I shall tell you more, that which my dear lord hath hither sent you. Sith he doth live so right sorrowfully in longing after Helka, men told my lord that Krimhild be without a husband, that Sir Siegfried be dead. If this be so, then shall she wear a crown before Etzel's knights. Could ye but permit her, this my sovereign bade me say. Then spake the mighty king, full courteous was his mood. An she care to do this, she shall hear my pleasure. This will I make known to you in these three days. Why should I refuse King Etzel before I learned her wish? Meanwhile men bade purvey good easement for the guests. They were served so well that Rudiger owned he had good friends there among Gunther's men. Hagen served him gladly, as Rudiger had done to him of yore. Till the third day Rudiger thus remained. The king sent for his counsel, full wisely he acted, to see whether his kinsmen would think it well that Krimhild take King Etzel to husband. Altogether they advised it, save Hagen alone. He spoke to Gunther the knight. Have ye but the right wit, ye will take good care that ye never do this, though she were fain to follow. Why, spake then Gunther, should I not consent? Whatever pleasure happened to the queen, I should surely grant her this. She is my sister. We ourselves should bring it to pass, if perchance it might bring her honor. Then answered Hagen, Give over the speech. Had ye knowledge of Etzel as of I, and should she harry him, as I hear you say, then first hath danger hap to you by right. Why, quoth Gunther, I'll take good care that I come not so near him that I must suffer aught of hatred on his part, as she become his wife. Said Hagen, Never will I give you this advice. For Gernot and Gisler main bed sent to learn whether the two lords would think it well that Krimhild should take the mighty noble king. Hagen still gainsayed, but no one other. Then spake the knight Grishiel of Burgundy, Friend Hagen, ye may still show your fealty. Make her to forget the wrongings that you've done her. Whatever good fortunes she may have, this ye should not oppose. Ye have in truth done my sister much ill. Continued Grisler, the full lusty knight, that she hath good cause, if she be angry with you. Never hath one bereft a lady of greater joys. Quoth Hagen, I'll do you to wit what well I know. If she take Etzel and live long anew, she'll do us to us still much harm, in whatever way she can. For soothful many a stately vassal will own her service. To this brave Grenot answered, Oh, it may not happen, that we ever ride to Etzel's land before they both be dead. Let us serve her faithfully, that maketh of her honor. Again Hagen spoke, None can gainsay me on the noble Krimhild wear the crown of Helka. She'll do us harm as best she may. You should give it over, to it beseem you knights far better. Wrathfully then spoke Grisler for Uta's son, Let us not all act as traitors. We should be glad of whatever honors may be done her. Whatever ye may say, Hagen, I shall serve her by my troth. Gloomy of mood grew Hagen when he heard these words. Gernot and Grisler, the proud knights and good, and Gunther mighty spake at last. If Krimhild wished it, they would let it hap without all hate. Then spoke Prince Gare, I'll tell the lady that she took with favor upon King Etzel, to whom so many knights owe dared obedience. We can well acquaint her of all the wrongs that have been done her. Then the doughty warrior hied him to where he saw Krimhild. Kindly she received him. How quickly then he spoke. Ye may well greet me gladly, and give me messenger's mead. Fortune is about to part you from all your woes. For the sake of your love, my lady, one of the very best that ever gained a kingdom with great honors, or should ever wear a crown, has sent envoys hither. Noble knights be wooing. This my brother bade me tell you. Then she spoke the sorrow-laden dame. God should forbid you and all my kinsmen that ye make a mock of me. Poor woman, what could I be to a man who had ever gained heartfelt love from faithful wife? Sorely she gainsayed it, but then came Gernot, 
her brother, and Grisler, the youth, and lovingly bade her ease her heart. It would do her good and truth, could she but take the king. None might persuade the lady that she should marry any man, and then the knights begged, If you do not else, pray let it happen that ye design to at least see the messenger. I'll not deny, spoke the noble dame, but that I should gladly see the margrave Rudiger for his passing curtsy. Were he not sent hither, whoever else might be the messenger, never should he become acquainted with me. Pray bid him come to-morrow to my bower. I'll let him hear my will in full, and tell it to him myself. At this her great laments broke forth anew. The noble Rudiger now craved not else but that he might see the high-born queen. He wished himself to be so wise that she could not but let the knight persuade her. If it should ever be, early on the morrow, when mass was sung, the noble envoys came. A great press arose, of those who should go to court with Rudiger. Many a lordly man was seen arrayed. Full sad of mood, the high-born Krimhild bedded, the noble envoy and good. He found her in the weeds she wore each day, whereas her handmaids wore rich clothes enow. She went to meet him at the door and greeted full kindly at such liegemen. Only as one of twelve he went to meet her. Men offered him great worship, for never were come more lofty envoys. They bade the lordling and his vassal seat them, before who were sent to need, to stand the low the two margraves, Iquit and Gur, the noble knights and good. None they saw merry of mood, for the sake of the lady of the house. Many fair women were seen to sit before her, but Krimhild only nursed her grief. Her dress upon her breast was wrought with scalding tears. This the noble noted well on Krimhild. Then spake this high-born messenger, Most noble princess, I pray you, permit me and my comrades that are come with me to stand before you and tell you the tidings of the sake of which we have ridden hither. Now may ye speak what so ye list, spake the queen. I am minded to hear it gladly. Ye be a worthy messenger. The others noted well her unwilling mood. Then spake Prince Rudiger of Beclaren, Edsel, a high-born king, hath in good faith sent you a friendly greeting, my lady. By messenger hither to his land, many good knights hath he sent hither for your love. Great joy without grief he doth offer you most truly. He is ready to give you constant friendship, as he did afore to Lady Helka, who lay within his heart. Search their longing for virtues, he shall hath often joyous days. Then spoke the queen, Margrave Rudiger, were there any who knew me bitter sorrow? He would not bid me marry any man. Of truth, I lost the best of husbands that ever lady won. What may comfort grief, the bold knight replied, but merry joy. When that any gan gain this, and chooseth one, he doth beseem him. Naught availeth so greatly for woe of heart. And ye care to love my noble master, ye shall have power over twelve mighty crowns. Thereto my lord will give you the lands of thirty princes, all of which was brightly hand, doth overcome. He shall become the mistress and the mastress of many worthy liegemen, who were subject to my lady Helka, and over many dames of high and princely race, who owned her sway. Thus spake the brave knight and bold. Thereto my lord will give you, this he bade me say, if ye would dine to wear with him the crown, the very highest power which Helka ever won, this shall ye rule before all Etzel's men. Then spake the queen, How might it ever list me to become a hero's bride? Death hath given me in the wand, one such dole that I must ever live joyously unto mine end.